Hi everyone, it's Cindy from Cindy's Art. I am using acrylic inks. This is Dollar Rowney FW and I'm using a sepia and I'll be using a teal in order to work and do an ink and watercolor painting. Now what I'm doing right now is putting down a continuous line and then you can see I split those lines up of these ink colors. I put down brown, now I'm adding blue and you want to work with this when it's wet and I'm using a dry brush look and see how I'm tilting that brush I'm not letting all of the bristles touch that paint I'm just having some of it go in once I start to add water into that you saw how quickly that spread so this is a new process for me so I am taking my time and I'm building up the painting to see what I want this abstract landscape to look like I'm adding in an Aurelion yellow uh, watercolor paint now into this and then I'm going to uh, force the paint to spread because I'm adding a little bit of water around it. If I put more water around the paint, then what's going to happen is the paint's going to move up into that water so it's drawing it like a magnet into it. So I did that. I like the look and all I'm going to do is continue to play with this. And right there I'm using a, an orange. That's a permanent orange and that's a watercolor. So I'm dabbing it in there and you can watch that paint spread. That's because there's more water above it that is pulling that watercolor forward. It makes a beautiful abstract uh, painting when this comes out. So I've got my line above and uh, I've got a break between the top part of the paper and the lower and I'm going to in a minute pick up some water and start to put it down on the lower area and get that painting. Um, so you're going to see me kind of dab colors in, let it spread. All I'm doing is looking to see, okay, how does this look? What do I want more of? And let me just play with it. Now see, again, when I'm putting my brush down, I'm using the tip, just a tip in a corner and I'm letting that spread. So that was about a good uh, two minutes of letting that acrylic ink sit there and it didn't go anywhere. Uh, and then I'm just adding water in, I'm gonna make it spread, I'm gonna tilt my paper, you're gonna see me do all sorts of things. Okay, I've worked with this so far. I like it. I like how it's spreading out. And I'm using Arches watercolor paper, which is a good paper for me. I'm using cold press. Hot press is super smooth and it would cause that ink to really flare up and travel more. Uh, I'm not there yet. I want to practice on the cold press right now. So I'm, I'm dumping some of this teal in there because I want to see what it would look like. Uh, when it starts to bloom out. So I put some of the drops on there and I use this skinny brush. There's water on that brush. And what I'm doing is dropping water down into where that ink is so I can get it to spread outward and spread upward. I could take my spray bottle, I could spray just above where that blue is on the top and it will again, it'll pull that paint into the water. That is just something to know. Um, if you've got more water around where you've got paint, that paint will spread if you touch it. So let's continue playing with this for a moment.
There's a point when I'm playing with a pitcher where I start to see what I want it to look like. And I saw hills. And because I saw hills, I took yellow and mixed it around where that teal is. And hello, yellow and blue is gonna make green. And so I'm just adding little dabs in there and I wanna see how the acrylic ink and the watercolor um, work together and how they flow together. Uh, this is really a fun process. And if you need to do a project where you're relaxing and not feeling like you've got to do a lot of tedious work, this is a lot of fun. And I decided um, I will do whatever I want when I'm playing with this stuff. So I wanted to take more of the darker brown and I wanted to see what it would look like to add that in here. And then as I did, I started to see more of this landscape that was going to unfold and it would turn into a house being on the right hand side. So you're going to see me continue to play, then you're going to see me end up with this house that I just put in at the very end. At this point in this painting, all I'm doing is asking myself, okay, what is this? What does this look like? It looks like a hill and that that's white is like a stream and there's a reflection in the bottom part of the painting and I see rocks. So I'm just putting a little bit of definition around these rocks. And on the right hand side where that white is, I see a house. So I'm gonna wind up turning that into uh, a house in there and I'm going to add in uh, a little bit more gold in the sky. Um, I wanted to make the picture a little more stronger speaking and one of the ways that I could do that was for me to add in a permanent orange. I will tell you quinacridone uh, yellow or gold. Quinacridone gold is an amazing beautiful color and when you put a light stroke on. It looks like a yellow, but if you continue to add more and more layers of that quinacridone gold, it looks like a golden type of sky. It's just beautiful. So just remember that name. So I'm going to be adding in some more tones into the sky. I'm just going to let you uh, just listen to the music while I finish up here. And uh, I would love to see your work. Please don't um, forget to subscribe. And uh, you can always follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and you can show me what you're doing too. Instagram, I love being able to see what people do um, and to hear you know, from you in the comment section. What's working for you? What's not working for you? What are you trying right now? What do you want uh, help on? And if I'm able to do that, I will tell you. And if I need to point you in another direction, I will do that as well. So it's good to be with you guys. And uh, you will see some more of these types of videos at the end uh, that you can tune into. And I look forward to being with you next time.